Hi again folks, today I'm going to show you how to create a multi-step form in Webflow. These forms are really powerful with a ton of features that just don't come with most landing page builders like conditional logic and progress bars. They fit beautifully into the Webflow ecosystem and of course they look great on any device. Let's get into how you can do this yourself. All right, first things first, sign up for a 14-day free trial over at growform.co. You'll need this to follow the rest of this tutorial. There's no credit card needed, and it only takes a moment. Okay, so let's create a new Webflow site, or like I'm doing, opening an existing page. On this page, we first need to add a section. So you'll want to click the plus on the left to add, then elements, and drag a section to the area you want the form to appear. Okay, here is where we connect the Grow Form account we've just created to Webflow. So if you go to the left-hand side on your Webflow page builder, click Apps, search for Grow Form. Now for me, because I've already done this, the word launch is ready for me. I can take it to the next step. If you're yet to see this, all you need to do is install the app on Webflow. So there will be a button that says install. All you have to do is follow the basic steps and it will redirect you back to this Webflow landing page. Once that's all done and dusted, you will see this launch button, sign into the account, and we're ready for the next step. All right, so all good to go. We'll start with a new form here. And for a template, let's go real estate. Give it a name before you press embed form. And now, as you can see, my grow form form is automatically embedded onto the page. I'll adjust the initial form height to make sure it's sitting nicely. And of course, if we want to make changes to the form, you can click on edit form in grow form, which I'll show you how to do now. So our form is embedded, but we want to make changes. Once you've clicked on edit form in Webflow, you'll be taken back to grow form where we can begin to make some changes. So instead of asking the user for their address up front, let's just ask for their zip code instead. I'm wanting to target that lucrative US market you see. So I'll delete the address field and add a zip code field here on step one. Next, there's a few steps here I don't want, so I can add or remove those as I see fit with the step navigation here in the top left. Let's remove bedrooms and bathrooms from this form for now. I'd also like to change the call to action on the last page, so I'll navigate to that step and edit the details here, changing the text on the left-hand side. The form's looking pretty good for now, but there's plenty more you can do with Grow Form. There are over 20 fields to choose from, and you can use conditional logic to show and hide fields or even whole steps based on previous questions. And of course, once you've done all this, remember to save your form. All right, we've edited our form. Let's see how it looks in Webflow. So back on the landing page designer, hit the play button in the top right of the builder. It's very small, so just make sure you click the right thing. Let's fill in the form now to check that this works. We are living stateside, newly refurbished, lots of features, and this is Conor McGregor wanting to find out more. Great. That's a success. It's worth mentioning, I could have added as many steps here in this form as I like, really getting more information and better quality leads from customers. In fact, the form I've created is kind of basic, but Grow Form has a huge template library of forms for all industries, including finance, solar, roofing, and so many more. There's also a ton of other functionality. You can add an address lookup powered by Google, real-time phone and email validation, and hidden fields, to name but a few. If you're still in the design mode in Webflow, you can change all the sizing settings on the right-hand side. Personally, I'd recommend setting it to slightly larger than it needs to be to give it some extra room. And of course, before deciding on your final numbers, you need to check that it all looks good in the various views, desktop, tablet, and mobile too. Coming to the end here, folks, it's really important to publish your Webflow site, as this will add some code to the site behind the scenes that's responsible for making sure that your form is always the right size. So 
go ahead and hit publish on Webflow, bearing in mind this will publish any changes you've made to your live site. And there it is, in all its glory. Now to see if our lead from earlier has been submitted, we can go to view leads in Growform. It's one of the tabs at the top. We want to make sure this form is working and there it is. And if you want to receive these leads in an email, go to edit form settings, alerts and integrations, and then go to adding an integration. Put in an email address and hit save. If you wanted to send your leads to another destination like a Google Sheets, CRM, or a third-party system, you can do this using Zapier. If you're as new to Zapier as I was, it's basically a digital glue that helps connect Growform with thousands of third-party systems, and they have a generous free plan included. I'll drop a link to the guide on Zapier in the description for this video. All right, that is it for today, but I trust you are now ready to take your form game to the next level with Growform on Webflow. If you found this video as useful as it was designed to be, click the like button, it's free to do that, and subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. And I always feel good when I see I've got a notification. If you've got any feedback beyond liking and subscribing, do leave us a comment. I always appreciate hearing from people wherever you are in the world. Have fun out there, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.